your Bibles with me this morning to Matthew the sixth chapter. Matthew the sixth chapter. Let me ask you guys a question for a sec. What if I hold this bottle up? What if I hold this bottle of water up for a minute? What do you think? What would happen? Arm would get tired? Alright. Think I can do it for a minute? Yeah. <coughs> That's no big deal, right? That's easy. What if I held this bottle of water up for an hour? What happened then? I'm going to get real tired. Yes, what else? Going to get way tired. Yeah? Get a little bored doing it. Yes? Arms going to get real tired. You think I can do it for an hour? You don't think so? Oh, you have little faith. <laughs> My arm's going to start falling down a little bit because it's going to get heavy. So what if, what if I held this bottle of water up for 24 hours? What do you think? <laughs> it's going to get heavier and heavier and heavier. I want you to notice something. I want you to notice something. If I held this bottle up for a minute, an hour, 24 hours, or a year. It would get extremely heavy. But did the weight of the bottle ever change? The weight of the bottle never changed one time. It was because I held on to it so long, that's what made it heavy. What about our worries? What about our worries? What about our worries? If we hold on to, to our worries a long time, they keep getting heavy and heavier and heavier and heavier. Some of us, ladies and gentlemen, hold on to worries for long periods of time. So I'm not talking about hours. I'm talking about days, months, years, decades. Are we getting tired of this by now? Are we getting tired? Are we? Our arms struggling a little bit by now. We we keep we keep holding on to these worries. Why? Jesus Christ says something about that, and we're going to talk about that this morning, as we read from God's Word, right in Matthew, the sixth chapter. Jesus is speaking to us this morning and talks about about why do we worry? Why do we have this anxiety? Why the worries? As I was doing this uh, research for this, I found uh, an interesting fact uh, or an interesting article, if you will. Patsy, these lights are a little low. If you'll twist them to the right, they'll give me a little bit more light. Thank you. So the, uh, the physician, his name, is, the doctor's name is A.J. Cronin. And this is what he, um, that he talks about as far as worrying is concerned. And he broke them down into categories and he put a percentage in his studies, in his paper, as to how uh, worries are categorized. And this is what he says, 40% of things that we worry about are things which are never going to happen. 40% are things that we worry about that's never going to happen. 30% are things that we worry about are things that we, we can't change because they're in the past. 12% of our time worrying is spilt, spent on health worries. And health worries, we typically cannot fix those as it is, ourselves rather. 10% of the time is, ta is taking place of our worries is just petty worries, just different worries that he categorizes as, as petty worries. And only 8%, 8% of the time that we are worrying, the doctor says, are real legitimate worries. Isn't that amazing? And worry. What do we worry? You know, what do we think about worries? And, you know, if, if I would ask you about what your percentages would be, how would they compare to that study? What percentage of you, what you worry about, can you actually control or change in the first place? Worries are a jump up into a lot of what ifs. I'm going to go tell I'm going to have a, I have, there's a couple of outlines, and thanks Dr. Gorman for a couple of points here. 
Um, but he says uh, uh, something called priming the pump. And so I'm going to use that. Priming the pump. Uh, in, in text here, in Matthew the 6th chapter, it's, it's priming the pump. It's, it's worrying is a sin. Why is worrying a sin for? Well, it takes our, our focus away from God and it focuses the concerns about our own lives. Whenever we are worrying about things, we are, and we are taking our eyes off of God and we're taking our, putting our eyes upon our circumstances. Now, I know that we're all talented people. We're all really pretty smart people. We have a lot of things going on. But who can change the outcome of different things, really? Uh, there's a small percentage of things that you can you can change the outcome on but in the big grand scheme of life um, you cannot change the outcome of a lot of things there's a lot of things that goes on that that you can't change you can change you and that's what we're going to talk about worrying and how that deals with you uh, worrying takes our focus away from God and shifts our focus upon our own life let's let, let read Matthew the sixth chapter verse 25 therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food, Jesus is asking, and, and in the body more important than clothes? Jesus continues on. This is Jesus speaking in verse 26. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you much more valuable? than they, the birds? Worrying. Worrying is different than being concerned. And I'm going to get into that. But worrying is different than being concerned. But, but let's talk about the ill effects of worry. Jesus Christ tells us specifically not to worry. Uh, that he's, he, In Scripture, He says that He's going to supply all of our needs. What is worry going to do? Well, let me break down into five different points here that, uh, that worries might do and will do. Worry will damage your health. I mean, that's kind of self-explanatory. It's kind of just real cut and dry. Worry will damage your health. I, I've been around people in life that they may have had a little ailment to them or a little sickness to them, and sometimes not any sickness whatsoever, but they've worried themselves literally to death. And that does happen. Your mind is so powerful. So worry, it damages your health. Second point is, is worry causes the object that you're worrying to consume your thoughts. You will go to bed thinking about it. You wake up in the morning thinking about it. It goes on and on and on. That's what worrying does. It takes over your life. Third point, it disrupts your productivity while taking over your life. In other words, all you are not really good for doing is anything. When you're worrying about it, you're sitting there on your hands, twiddling your thumbs, not doing anything about it. That doesn't do any good for anybody. No matter what circumstance you're in and the different kinds of worries that we go through. The relationship worries, job worries, financial worries, health worries. Sitting there on your hands, twiddling your thumbs, worrying about it doesn't do a thing, does it? But it does disrupt your productivity. Next, it, it negatively affects the way that you treat others. You may snap at your wife or your husband. You may snap at your kids. You may snap at your coworkers. You may snap real more easily about different things. Why? Because you are so worried. You are so consumed and caught up about whatever it is that you're worrying about that you are short with others. Jesus doesn't want us to be that way. Fifth point. And I guess most importantly, it reduces our ability to trust God. You see, ladies and gentlemen, we all have experienced ill effects to worry. Uh, we go to bed with it sometimes. We wake up with it. And, and listen, there's a difference here. There's a difference in be, being worried and there's a difference in being concerned. And let me address that briefly here. The difference is uh, uh, between worrying and genuine concern uh, is, uh, is this. Uh, worry, ready for it? Ready, worry, immobilizes you, as I said. It consumes you. It causes you to not do anything. Concern, what does concern do? Concern moves you into action. 
Worry focuses on your problem. Concerns focuses on God and how he is going to lead you and move you in the situation. Whatever situation you're going through, as I mentioned, there's all kinds of different uh, worrying opportunities that we have for, for, for health issues, for financial issues, for relationship issues, for, uh, for all kinds of worrying opportunities that we have out there. And some of us go looking for those worrying opportunities. You know, several years back I did a, a sermon on uh, being in Worryville. And uh, uh, that's something that uh, continue, that you guys continue to talk about even to, the, to this day. But some of us, as I talked about even in that sermon series, some of us, we go looking for opportunities to worry. Some of us are professional worriers. We love worrying about something. Our life is not fulfilled unless we're worrying about something. We got to be in the, if it's not happening to us, it's happening to somebody else. And boy, we're going to throw our nose into their business and worry about their stuff. You know, it's we. Some of us are not content until we're worrying. And Christians, ladies and gentlemen, we are, are not. Uh, uh, we don't have a free take on the market. We still get caught up into these things as well. What about this? Is it in the Christian vocabulary? This is what we say. Well, well, we're going to pray about it. And all we're doing, that's a nice Christian word to say, give me some more of your stuff that I can worry about with you. Let me have some more of the stuff that I can jump in there with you so I can gossip about it or be in your business about it. And then I can also worry about that with you. Now there's times, uh, ladies and gentlemen, again, there's a difference between worrying and being concerned. If you're concerned for your fellow brother and sister in Christ, praise God. That means you're helping them do something about it. But being worrying just means you're sitting there doing nothing. You're spinning your wheels. Ever got stuck anywhere? Ever got stuck anywhere? I know that uh, we were golfing not too long ago, me and the boys. And, uh, and so... Uh, uh, we were we always we were driving for looking for a, a golf ball that one of us had hit, and um, it was right at the edge of when we were on vacation. It was right at the edge of a lake, and uh, I just knew that we were going to find this golf ball. And uh, so as we were driving up, and we drove right to the edge uh, of a, the lake, and uh, boy, that that grass turned to mud pretty quick. I don't know if you ever tried to pull it, push a golf cart. They're pretty heavy. And so what happens? You just sit there and you spin your wheels. You spend a lot of effort doing it, and mud's going everywhere, but you're going nowhere. And our lives, ladies and gentlemen, is exactly like that. We can sit there and worry about things over and over and over again, and we keep pushing the pedal to that worry, and that worry could be slinging mud everywhere, but you're going nowhere. Instead of worrying about it, pray about it. Instead of worrying about it, take it to God. Take that healthy concern to God and let God take to control of that. Then we can have that healthy concern to go forth and, and do something about it. Worrying is just staying in the same spot. When you're concerned and have that healthy concern, you're praying and seeing where God leads. And where God leads, you go. That'd make a good song, wouldn't it? Wherever he leads, I'll go. I think I've heard that a time or two. We don't need to prime the pump. We don't need to, to get all worked up about things. We, we Worrying, this is a big thing, ladies and gentlemen. Worrying prevents us growing in our faith. Worrying prevents us growing in our faith. We're, we're so caught up in our things that, that we are not growing in our faith. And when we have healthy concern and we see God, let God guide us and we're doing things, whenever we're doing things, it's amazing how, how God gets us through things. Think about this. You've gone through things in life. And, and as you've gone through things in life and you had a healthy concern because there was a lot of bad things around you that was happening and, and it was pretty rough. And as you were going through the things, you were trusting God. And when you trusted God, when you had that healthy concern with God, you had that healthy uh, concern and you put your hand in, in the hand of the master and he's getting you through the obstacle course. Did you get by? Did you get scraped and bruised and, and bumped and those kind of things? Yeah. Did you breathe, bleed maybe a little bit? Yeah. Did you go through all the different junk that you had to go through in life yeah but if you held on to God you're in God's hand when you're in God's hand then he can get you through all that stuff in life yeah. it's amazing how instead of us getting through this 
this course in life, we want to turn loose of God and say, all right, God, I, I've got this. Or, all right, God, I'm going to worry about this. Why are you going to stay in your junk whenever God says, come on, let's go? Now, did you realize this, ladies and gentlemen, when you're going through all that junk, if you have the hand of Jesus Christ there with you, he's teaching you if you will learn. If you will learn, that's the big key. Ladies and gentlemen, it's like Peter. My favorite, my, one of my favorite verse, but, uh, uh, stories in the Bible is whenever, whenever Peter, whenever, whenever Jesus comes walking out on the water, and it was a story that we went through the last couple of weeks, uh, got right up leading up to that. That whenever he's out there on, on the water and he looks and he says, "Jesus, if that's you, tell me to get out of this boat. Come on, let's go." And as long as he had his eyes on Jesus, what happened? He walked on water. Ladies and gentlemen, when you have your eyes on Jesus, you can do the impossible. You can go out and do the impossible. Jesus Christ will, will get you through this thing called life if we have our eyes focused upon him instead of our problems. But it's so easy for us to worry about things, isn't it? Because guess what? Sometimes we, you know, it's real easy when we're around a lot of church folks and the, the church folks are there and they, and they lift you up and they, they're edifying you, boy, they're, they're edifying God at the same time and they're serving you and all these things are good and then you got to go home and lay your bed, uh, lay your head on your pillow at night. When you lay there, your mind starts to play tricks on you and you start running around in circles and, and then you start worrying, 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 and worrying. That's the time a lot of times that that happens or when you're alone. I would suggest this. Because it happens to us all. Crack open a scripture in the Bible. Psalms is fantastic. But crack open a scripture in the Bible. Or have you some scriptures already worked out for you. That when you know those times are going to come ahead. Stand upon those scriptures. In our house, Kellen has scriptures that she just writes down on the list. So we have one in the refrigerator. We'll have one when you're, when you're in the bathroom. Uh, you have different lists. Why? Because we know that, that things are going to happen in life. And you've got to need God's word to get you through. I didn't hear an amen on that. Ladies and gentlemen, worrying keeps our faith from growing. We must realize that we can't control the events or out, outcome of life. Uh, that's life. But we can control who we are in the worries and the storm. Continuing on, let's see here in Matthew, the sixth chapter, verse 27, about how worry is incapable of enhancing our lives. Jesus says here, who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. Verse 30, if that is how God clothed the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow thrown in the fire, will, be, will, will he not much more clothe you, you old little faith? Worry robs us. Worry is a thief and it robs us. It takes uh, life out of us. It takes and steals our joy. I'm going to do a sermon series about uh, joy here uh, pretty soon. Uh, but uh, but 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 worry is a thief. It takes something from us. You, you realize this, ladies and gentlemen. I, I've been around a lot of people in this lifetime. Lots and lots of people uh, in various capacities, whether it's school or coaching or preaching. I've had the opportunity to come across a lot of people, and I've yet to find one that can add a single hour to their life by worry. Not one. Not a single second. Not a single minute. But. We all have the same 24 hours a day. It's up to you what you do with it. Do you sit around worrying about something that may or may not happen? Or are you going to do something about it? You see, worrying robs us. It's like a thief. we got to refuse. Refuse to worry. One other moment. 31st verse here. Jesus says... So don't worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? Jesus Christ just straight up just says, don't worry. Don't listen to the worries, lies. Stay rooted in the truth. And that is the word of God. Remember, God has a plan for you. God has a plan for you. He loves you. 
He didn't give his son just to give up on you. He didn't give his son Jesus Christ to die on the cross just to give up on you. And you may say, oh, Brother Jimmy, I, but you don't know how bad I have. You don't know how bad I've been. You don't know all the bad stuff that I've done. You don't understand all the, the, the junk that I've been through. You're right. I don't, I don't know and I don't need to know. God knows and he loves you anyways. God knows and says, you know what, brother, sister, son, daughter, put your hand in my hand. And let me guide you. Let me take you. I'll take it from here. Now you've got to pedal every now and then. But I'll take it from here. A couple of years back, uh, probably a couple, about four or five years back, I bought a, a tandem bike. Do you know what a tandem bike is? It's like the limo of bicycles. It's got like two seats. It's real long. And I got it because, uh, uh, because Carol and I were going to go bike riding together. Has anybody ever rode a, a, a tandem bike? Yeah, some of you guys are laughing. You know, you know what's up. So look at this. Ready? If you've ever been on a tandem bike, it looks pretty easy when you see them on the videos and you see people out and about. I remember I used to have a friend in Lovington. I'd see him on the tandem bike and I thought, oh, this is pretty cool. I need to get one of those. So I got one. I ordered it in. I got it in. I put it all together. I was hyped. Kellen did not go bike riding with me. She's never been to that bike to this day. <laughs> but some of the boys have been on it with me. Guess what, though? You know, I'm used to those bikes that you could pedal for a little while and then kick back and coast and like, you know. If you've been on a tandem bike, you know that that ain't happening. If you don't ped pedal, you fall down and go boo-boo, right? Yeah. You don't go anywhere on a tandem bike because it, it, it stands to reason. But I didn't think about this. Hey, well, I'm supporting twice the weight on here. So we've got to do twice the work if the other one's not pedaling. And that's exactly what took place as I was as I was out there pedaling and and uh, I think it was Jake's one time. Daddy, let's go let's go riding on that on the bike. Perfect. Let's get on. I'm on the front because I want to steer. I'm steering and I'm huffing and puffing. We're not a we're not a half mile from my house and my legs are burning, sweating. I'm like, why did I get this stupid bike for? And as I'm doing all this stuff, I look and Jason's being a looky loo back there. He's looking at stuff, pedals for a little while, stops pedaling. Son, that's not how this works. Because you know when you're a bike, you can't like look around it. I said, son, pedal. All right, good. About half a mile down the road, you know, I'm about broke down. I almost had to get my cell phone to have Carolyn come pick me up. <laughs> but you know what, though? I pedaled. His daddy pedaled and took him down the road. And then when he started pedaling, he started picking up the pace, and we went through it together. And we didn't fall one time on that trip. Ladies and gentlemen, our Heavenly Father is in the front, and He pedals even when you can't pedal. Our Heavenly Father's up there pedaling, and when you can't pedal, and He's not going to let you fall. And whenever you can get to where you can pedal on your point, uh, He's steering the ship. He's steering the ship where he wants to do, but 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 your goal should be, I just want to pedal and step with Jesus and do what Jesus says. So when he turns around and says, Son, pedal. Yes, sir. Son, coast. Yes, sir. Son, let me speak to you. Yes, sir. Son, I need you to do this for me. Yes, sir. Son, why do you worry? I don't know. Why do you worry? I don't need to. Why? God's got this. God's got this. God says in the scripture there that he's got it. We just got to have faith and say, all right, Lord, you do have it. Here I am. Use me. Here I am. Take care of me. Here I am. Love me, Lord. Here I am. Ultimately, save me. This morning, let's stand. As Patsy begins to play, I'm just going to ask you this morning. You were on a bicycle with God. Are you listening? Or are you trying to slam on the brakes? 
Are you listening to God, what He's telling you? He's, he's telling you to pedal, to coast, to do that. God's talking to you, but some of us, we want to slam on the brakes. We want to get a stick and put it in the spokes and, and mess things up. Why? God has a perfect plan for you and I. Why in the world are we going to mess that up? Ladies and gentlemen, you may be here and you may not be on the bike with Jesus. You may be here and and you've always wanted to ride with Jesus. You've always wanted to be on the seat there or he's in front of you. You've always wanted to do that, but you never had the courage to, to get on. This morning, have that courage. Jump in with Jesus. Jump on with Jesus and, and let him take you and show you what life is all about. His love and his grace is sufficient enough for you my prayer this morning if you have never given your life to Jesus Christ that you would do that this morning that you would come down front and Jesus Christ says that that, that who profess, professes men before me if, uh, professes me before men that I will profess him and them her before God the Father if that's you this morning I'm going to ask you to come it may be the Bethel Baptist Church is where you need to, to call home. You might need to get baptized and say, Lord Jesus, I need to start fresh with you. Whatever God is calling, you come this morning.